In this video, we'll go from the broad to the specific, starting with the function feeling and then the function attitude, introverted feeling and then the flavor analytic introverted feeling, and finally how it shows up in relationships. This is number 15 in a series of 16. If you're watching the series, you will note there's some repetition, but in case this is the one and only video you watch, I want you to have all the information, so feel free to use the chapter markers in the description. My main references for this video are Drs. Carl Gustav Jung and Dario Nardi. Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist who published the theory of psychological types in 1921, and Dario is a prolific researcher and author. He found evidence of psychological types in the neuroscience data captured by EEG assessments he's been doing with people from all walks of life since 2006. And in case we haven't met, my name is Doris Fulgrava. I'm a certified coach with a master's in applied psychology, and I help people create happier, healthier relationships. A few caveats before we begin to manage expectations and again in case this is the only video you watch. Number one, these videos describe the functions in their purest state. Functions rarely show up in their purest state as they interact with other functions and your brain is really active doing multiple things at any given time. Like it's regulating your hormones and figuring out if you're tired right now. So you may not resonate with 100% of the description of this function 100% of the time and that's okay. Because number two, these videos describe the function for this function type. You may not be this particular function type, which means this function may not be at the very top or dominant in your consciousness. And that's okay too, because it's still in your system. You still have access to it and you still use it a lot. And paying attention to this function may help you recognize when it pops up out of your subconscious. So then you can practice integrating it consciously. Ready? So with that, the feeling function is one of two rational judging functions. Rational because it involves reasoning, i.e. a process of reflection, and judging because it's about making decisions. The feeling function helps us recognize shared values, consider other people's feelings, and connect on personal levels. It makes us empathic, merciful, and curious about human relationships. It is adept at interpreting body language and tone of voice, committed to social and interpersonal responsibilities, but it also relies on consensus and morality. Dr. Linda Behrens describes it this way. Feeling is a process of making evaluations based on what is important, where personal, interpersonal or universal values serve as guideposts. Using the cognitive process of feeling, we engage personally with the information to decide according to the impact on people, appropriateness, harmony, likes and dislikes. Weighing different values, considering ethical and moral issues, attending to personal and relationship goals, and having a belief in something, something and having a belief in something, all involve feeling judgments. Moving on to the function attitude, introverted feeling, which is the dominant function for ISFP and INFP types. And what follows are Jung's words. His language from 100 years ago is different from how I speak today. He's usually quite male-centric and refers to the feeling function as she, her all the time, although there's obviously also men who have these preferences. He also uses the word object to describe anything and anyone outside of you and subject to refer to you or the person. Like the other introverted functions, introverted feeling is also principally determined by the subjective factor. Jung says, it is extremely difficult to give an intellectual account of the introverted feeling process or even an approximate description of it, although the peculiar nature of this kind of feeling is very noticeable once one has become aware of it. It seldom appears on the surface and is generally misunderstood. It is a feeling which seems to devalue the object and it therefore manifests itself for the most part negatively. It is continually seeking an image which has no existence in reality, but which it has seen in a kind of vision. It glides unheedingly over all objects that do not fit within its aim. It strives after inner intensity for which the objects serve at most as a stimulus. The depth of this feeling can only be guessed. It can never be clearly grasped. It makes people silent and difficult of access. It comes out with negative judgments or assumes an air of profound indifference as a means of defense. So that was a long passage I've quoted there and I actually encourage you to listen to it again because Jung gives a really rich description. But to rephrase and summarize, introverted feeling often isn't a verbal intellectual experience. It can be turmoil. 
all on the inside, difficult to describe, but you'll know it when you feel it. Where introverted thoughts can be discussed, introverted feelings need an artistic ability to capture their depth and complexity. And because it's such a subjective personal thing, other people may not get it. Devaluing the object and manifesting itself negatively, I think, refers to the fact that reality tends to fall short of internal subjective dreams and wishes. So introverted feeling types most often feel disappointment. Even they may not know exactly what it is that's missing, it's just that whatever is there is not right or good enough. Jung continues. If, however, the feeling is falsified by an egocentric attitude, it at once becomes unsympathetic because it is then concerned mainly with the ego. It inevitably creates the impression of sentimental self-love, of trying to make itself interesting, and even of morbid self-admiration. In other words, lying to yourself or dramatizing your feelings, like an immature person might be tempted to do to get attention, is likely to backfire. As I've mentioned before, Jung attributes feeling functions to women, but there are plenty of ISFP and INFP men out there as well, so the still waters run deep implies to all the sexes. Jung says, they are mostly silent, inaccessible, hard to understand, often they hide behind a childish or banal mask, and their temperament is inclined to melancholy. They neither shine nor reveal themselves. Their outward demeanor is harmonious, inconspicuous, giving an impression of pleasing repose or of sympathetic response with no desire to affect others, to impress, influence or change them in any way. Although there is a constant readiness for peaceful and harmonious coexistence, strangers are shown no touch of amiability, no gleam of responsive warmth, but are met with apparent indifference or a repelling coldness. Often they are made to feel entirely superfluous. As far as possible, the feeling relationship is kept to the safe middle path, all intemperate passions being resolutely tabooed. Jung also says that it's not that this type has no feeling, is that it's more intensive than extensive, so more depth than breadth. They feel things more passionately and are more moved, and all of that processing happens on the inside. So they look unaffected, but a lot is happening underneath which, as he puts it, can give these types a sort of stifling or oppressive feeling which holds everybody around her under a spell. It gives a woman of this type a mysterious power that may prove terribly fascinating to the extroverted man, for it touches his unconscious. So much for the function and the function attitude. Now we're moving into the flavor. The one we're looking at today is the analytic style or flavor. For reference, this flavor is focused on a goal, it filters out distractions, and it looks like clarity and confidence. That's not to say it's simplistic. It considers the complexities of a situation and includes relevant variables. Its approach is top down, so it's driving the situation with the point in mind. People with the style like to solve problems quickly using familiar tools and can be unaware of their own biases. The style is often more visual. It pays attention to what is being said, but also facts, figures, rules, methods, and labels. Thinking is often literal to the specific context and they often describe using analogies. In business, this type is more comfortable with hierarchy, defined roles and leadership, and likely careers for those with an analytical style include business, engineering, finance, law, the military, hard sciences, and tech. Dario calls the analytic introverted feeling type the quester. Questers pursue a singular life quest or truth. They can look like thinking types because their aim for moral clarity means they're applying analytical skills to deal with complex issues around their values and belief systems. The ultimate goal is living a life of alignment and congruency or consistency. They are dedicated to developing and nurturing a core personal identity, maybe based on an external holy book or doctrine, but mainly following their own conscious. Dario clarifies that this singular quest doesn't have to be moral or religious. It can also be something like sports or music or travel. They'll say life is all about this and mean it so they can come across as quite narrow-minded and dedicated. I want to remind you that all types can and do have relationships with all other types, just like you wouldn't hire an employee based on their type. You shouldn't choose a partner solely based on their type either because it explains a lot, but people are a lot more complex than that. 
Still, type is the best framework I know to understand and then bridge our differences no matter who we're with. Also, to my knowledge, there is no reliable statistical research into people's types and sexual preferences as yet. So what I suggest may or may not resonate. However, if you'd like to take part in such research, please email me. Now, in dating, you're probably attracted to this type's mysterious intensity. Depending on where they're at in their journey towards authentic congruency, they might tell you all about their quest and then it's up to you to show whether you understand them and how you might be able or excited about supporting them. For this type, it's important to see that their intense internal emotions have somewhere to land in a partner who is open to also being moved and who gets what they're going through. So if they go through the trouble of trying to express all that is going on inside, make sure you don't just give it a simple, oh, cool response and immediately change the subject, right? Stick with it, engage with it. And even if you don't get it, you can probably appreciate that it's important to them. They might ask you questions about your purpose and passion as well, but they might also come across as quite self-involved because their mental energy is literally wrapped up in trying to align everything in their being to this one goal. In the bedroom, well, if their quest is to be the world's best lover, you should be in for a treat. I SFP types probably need a little more sensory stimulation, so anything involving sight, smell, sound, taste or touch. And for INFP types, it might be more romantic mental foreplay. In case they don't have the words to express how they'd like to feel or what they'd like to do in the bedroom, you might spend some time to figure out their favorite films or plays or poems, because again, they will have an ideal version of lovemaking in their minds that they're trying to get to. The challenge might be convincing them that real sex is always going to be messy and your bodies will always make involuntary noises, but those don't have to ruin the moment because you can choose to laugh at the humanity of it all and continue. As partners, introverted feeling types may be private, so small groups of family and friends. They want to please their partners and for them to be happy, but they will primarily be busy with their own stuff. So they may not have as much patience or compassion for your stuff as you might like. Again, not on purpose. Their brain is drawn to noodle on this one subjective, personal, overarching inner thing. Over time, growing older and gaining maturity will help reconcile the ideal romantic image with actual reality. But they might also become a little cynical if they're not dealing with or processing their disappointments. Communication with them is likely going to be deep and meaningful, and I wouldn't be surprised if this type sometimes doesn't find the words to speak, but might write you a letter instead. This sharing of their precious insides is a privilege and doesn't come easily, so if you are in their confidence, well done. Don't use it against them during conflict. And there you have an overview of this function and its flavor. Again, it, it, it's a short video and this cannot describe all the nuances and individual idiosyncrasies, but I hope you have a better idea. If you think you are an analytic introverted feeling type or have a partner of this type, please add your comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for our final episode in the series, Holistic Introverted Feeling. Until then, feel free to check out this video next and I'll see you there.